Sounds like something you might have wanted to run by your extremely smart lawyer first. Never forget who came through for you during clutch time. You stay ready. I'll let you know what's next. Let's go, Drew. I'm so sorry, but something's come up. Let's do this another time. Where the fuck is she going? What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. And this video, I'll be talking about episode eight. Norma and Carter having a common enemy, how Davis got to know that Norma is being followed by Carter's team and the mistake Braden and Tariq made after killing this guy. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's get straight into the topics. In my last video, I spoke into details about how Carter will make Felicia's death look like an accident. I equally stated that looking at the episodes left, I doubt if they will practically show how he staged it. As we have seen in the opening of episode 8, they have used the voiceover narration approach which in filmmaking is a fast way to establish a scenario that doesn't necessarily need to be shown in full details together with a montage. Also, if they have to show every detail on how Felicia's death was staged by Carter, that would take more scenes for it to be done. For someone to discover the body before the team gets to know and all this will require more than 20 minutes timeline. So yeah, the best approach to save time was the voiceover narration they used. If you want more clarification and you haven't watched my last video yet, do check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Also, I kept saying that Nico is suspecting Carter in all this from Kamal Tate to Felicia. He can smell lies all over Carter. Now, episode 8 seems to be all over the place and not the usual episode 8 of power we normally get. But all the same, I hope this is a build up to an explosive episode 9 and 10. Now, there has been a setup that I feel has gone wrong at the end of the episode 2, which I believe will surely end up in a serious war in the remaining two episodes. Now, some of you might not understand how Davis got to know that Norma was being watched. So I'll break this down for you layer by layer for you to understand why Davis became the hero to Norma all of a sudden. So Tariq and Monet went to Norma to plan how they can take Carter out and they gave her some reasons to believe that Carter is after her. Norma wasn't convinced and ready to fight any NYPD. Bottom line, Tariq and Monet's plan didn't work with Norma. Now, they took the next step to go to Davis who can possibly give them some information to give to Carter for their idea to work, which is pitching Norma against Carter. So after the back and forth with Davis, he decided to help them and mind you, Davis wasn't happy with Norma even marrying Kane in the first place. And with Tariq also coming from the angle of Obi's situation with her and how he ended, Davis seemed to look out for himself. Now, Davis in return will need them to come through for him as well. Davis want to be the one winning point with Norma instead of Kane, so Tariq and Monet will have to return the favor by giving him an information on what Carter's plans are so that he, Davis, can be there on time to save Norma. I mean, you all preach about allegiance. Well, Mr. Ray Makeover is going to need some in return. Never forget who came through for you during clutch time. Who always comes through for both your asses. Yes, of course. Now, that was why he made this statement. Now, when this happens, Norma will be pissed and get scared with the only option as taking Carter out, which has been Tariq and Monet's original idea. So, in summary, here is how the layers played out. Tariq and Monet couldn't convince Norma, so they got all the leverage from Davis on Norma to Carter, which was a meeting she was having with Sterling Reynolds. Now, Carter in return did what he had to do by trying to set her up. Davis knowing what Carter would do and where Norma's meeting is taking place, he stormed the restaurant and prompted her on what is happening. Norma panicked and quickly aborted her meeting with Reynolds. This left Carter blind as to what happened suddenly, but this was the whole setup from Tariq and Monet with Davis as the catalyst. So if you notice, as soon as Norma said she was going to deal with Carter and that, Tariq and Monet tried to warn her, Davis tested Tariq that Norma has been activated, which means that Norma is now willing to get rid of Carter. Now that's what the big plan was, to pitch Norma against Carter so that they both take each other or one of them out. Now what will it benefit Tariq and Monet if Carter kills Norma or vice versa? If Carter kills Norma, that means that their deal with Carter is over hands he will leave them alone and out of his control. They will go back to business and take control of their drag game like before. Now, what happens if Norma takes Carter out? Same way Monet and Tariq will be out of Carter's control and with Norma, they can still go back to business. So either ways, 
It will be a win for them anyhow it turns out. But here is the unfortunate situation. Norma arranged with Nico for a meet and Nico told Carter about it and Carter decided to show up instead. This meeting rather exposed how Tariq and Monet played them both and they seem to have a common enemy now. If they decide to join forces together, it also means that Kane and Drew will have to come together and fight their mother, Tariq and Diana. But question is, will Family First play an essential role in this? Will Kane and Drew agree to go against their mother and sister? Drop your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. Let's discuss. Now let's talk about Anya. I found this scene very hilarious. It is funny how Monet didn't even know that she was Norma's daughter. When they met, Monet thought Anya was another girl Kane had arranged to smash. Very typical of him. That's why on her way out, she was asking him she thought he was about to marry. But damn, assuming Anya was actually Kane's girlfriend and Monet said that, Kane would have been so pissed. Now, I have a feeling Anya will become fond of Kane in no time and possibly save her during this war that is about to happen. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you think Kane and Drew will go against their family or they will team up with their family and fight Carter and Norma? Drop your thoughts, theories in the comment section below. Now, in this episode, we saw Braden and Tariq making a huge mistake, which if we were going to have another season, trust me, they will potentially end up in jail. Now, Braden told Tariq they were only going to scare the guy off for selling bad coke to his girlfriend. But Braden had his own plans and things went messy. Because they both were not there to kill, they didn't bother to wear gloves. And they left a lot of fingerprints around and even on the staircase they climbed down. Now, if you remember Ghost, he made a similar mistake when he entered Greg Nock's room and exited through the window. He left his fingerprint on the glass of the window and that was what Angela used as evidence to convict him as the killer of her boyfriend. And this is the same situation Tariq and Braden found themselves. But with two episodes remaining, I don't think this will be extremely significant to the storyline, but you may never know. In power, they don't create mistakes for no reason. Every action is either to reveal something or to make something happen. And most of the time, it is the little, little mistakes like this that becomes the big deal. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below and your overall thought about episode eight. For me, I expected more, but it is what it is. Let's wait and see what episode 9 and the final episode has in store for us. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, and most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.